Hi, I'm Stephen. I'm the contingent leader for the World Scout Jamboree. Um, and I welcome to everyone who is on our call tonight. Hopefully there's a lot of you out there listening and we're interested in the World Scout Jamboree. Uh, just before we get started, I'd just like to introduce myself a little bit for those that uh, don't know me. I'm a, a branch commissioner here in the ACT and I'm very interested in major events. So that's one reason I'm looking at being the contingent leader this time. More importantly for the contingent though, I have three very capable young young leaders running the rest of the jamboree for me and i'd like to introduce them now lloyd good thank you um, first of all lloyd nervin uh, my deputy contingent leader uh, wave lloyd yep that's lloyd lloyd is a leader a branch international commissioner in new south wales and has a lot of uh, jamboree experiences under his belt. In he was the district, con oh, sorry, the deputy contingent leader at uh, WSJ nineteen. So it's really good to have Lloyd backing up and supporting me in this role here. Next one is Phoebe, our assistant contingent leader. Hi, Phoebe. Phoebe was a member of the contingent to America last time, a youth member and she applied and has been appointed as the assistant contingent leader and supporting her is toby toby uh, again is a young leader from uh, sydney um, and to give him an even better call out he comes from the same scout group that isaac hubbard a scout in many 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 years ago but we are continuing the tradition from st ives so thank you toby the rest of this presentation, though, I'm going to hand over to our young people. We are a youth-led uh, contingent, and I'm really here as the advisor to help and to take the buck when things go wrong. But obviously, nothing's going to wrong, go wrong because we've got three very good, capable young people looking after the contingent. No need to laugh, Phoebe. So thank you all, and I'll hand over to the next person. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, so we're just going to kick off quickly with a uh, short video. Phoebe, over to you. Great, thanks. So first of all, we need to talk about what is a World Scout Jamboree. It's a very big camp. Um, so a World Scout Jamboree is a worldwide scout camp and it's only held every four years and there are attendees from all around the world. Last time there was about 50,000, which is pretty sizable, if you ask me, you know, just a massive place to meet people and have a great time. While you're there, you can you develop social skills, leadership, and other important life skills that you may not even think about or realize you're learning and developing. Um, as a part of our contingent, you'll travel with a group of Australians and you all become so close. By the end of it, you're gonna become like a family. It's just the bond you share and the experiences you go all through together, it's amazing. And you just, you make these lifelong friendships from experiencing all these different cultures from around the world and just going through this amazing experience with so many different people from so many different places. So that's basically what it is in a nutshell. Thanks, Phoebe. Uh, so where are we going? Uh, so we are heading from anywhere in Australia up to uh, South Korea. Uh, so that's this is where we are currently and this is where we're heading to uh, in our world. Um, with this in mind, we are flying into a place called Seoul, uh, which is uh, where we will have a few days prior to the Jamboree. And um, as you can see here, this is an image from the campsite, uh, a, sort of an infographic which the Jamboree has built. 
And the campsite overlooks the sea. Uh, it's absolutely flat, which is amazing. Uh, and it's situated in proximity to the beautiful national park uh, in South Korea. Um, the site is about uh, 8.8 kilometers uh, long and it spreads about 6.2 kilometers wide. Uh, sorry, uh, 1.7 kilometers wide. Um, and they're based on the largest points. And what's really good about this site, if anyone remembers uh, past world jamborees, uh, some are very sparse areas. This one's quite contained. And I think one of the coolest things they're going to try and do at this jamboree is actually have uh, the world's longest uh, dining room table uh, at the event, which will be pretty cool. Toby, over to you. Thank you, Lloyd. Um, so yeah, so the Jamboree is going to be a really great experience and we're going to depart on the 28th or 29th of July in 2023. And then we're going to discover Seoul. So we're going to go for a bit of a exploration through one of the capital cities out in South Korea. Uh, and then we're going to actually experience the World Jamboree from the 1st of August to the 12th of August, uh, followed by departing uh, Korea or starting an optional post tour, which hopefully you've seen the post from tonight. Uh, which if you don't know, the optional post tours are in Japan and Thailand, and they will go from the 14th of August to the 18th of August. And on Saturday, the 19th of August, we'll hopefully all be home and safe. On to the next slide. So the theme of the Jamboree is draw your dream. And this is a slogan that the, um, the World Jamboree team came up with to try and encapsulate scouting, especially for such a big event. And Pretty much all of these five categories that you see on screen here um, all encapsulate some form of adventure or exciting activity that you get to participate in. For instance, Scouting for Life is, means that many of the program features will engage young people in developing leadership and life skills through scouting activities. Um, they will challenge you, they'll help you learn about global issues and become active citizens. These program elements will incorporate scouting values and methods as well as ideas around global citizenship education and education for sustainable development, which leads really nicely into the sustainability one. Uh, together with the global, regional and national partners, the Jamboree program will be compromised of activities that will engage young people in learning about the sustainable development goals. If you haven't already learned about the sustainable development goals, it's a great opportunity to help better the world and put your part into making it a better place. The smart and scientific category falls into helping with the STEM initiative and helping people have the opportunity to explore through experiences that are unique to this jamboree. These experiences could include anything from flying a drone to experiencing VR. We might not know yet, but it's definitely bound to have a lot of technological availability and opportunity. ACT, you're probably wondering what that stands for. It stands for Adventure, Culture and Tradition. The Jamboree program will offer various adventurous activities that use the environment around the campsites, including mountains, rivers, and seas, to enable scouts to connect with the nature, uh, to connect and discover the nature. The event will also encourage participants in cross-cultural exchange to experience the best of Korean culture and traditional tradition from K-pop music to bibimbap food to pretty much so much more. So there's a lot of opportunity there for adventure, culture, and tradition. The safe and secure part of the Jamboree is ensuring that everyone will be feeling safe and secure throughout the Jamboree program and will be given the opportunity to go and explore these opportunities. So that's what the Draw Your Dream is and that's pretty much the big encapsulation of it. Over to Lloyd. Oh, me again. Haha. -ha. It is me. So yeah, so Scouts, as we know, is an international organization spanning over 150 different countries. Um, never have I had the opportunity to discover and learn about so many different places and cultures at the World Jamboree. I went to the last one and thousands of people from around the globe, from all corners, were brought together and encouraged to show off their traditions with the, entire, with the entirety of the Jamboree and experience something really, truly unique. Times are allocated for each group to perform on stage, uh, routinely swapping members for other dinners and exploring different cultures. And if that isn't enough, you can spend your free time walking across the campsite where each country has a dedicated area to learn more about those with your campsite. It is truly a, a unique experience, uh, a, a unique part of the experience that very few get access to. 
So it's definitely an opportunity for you if you're interested in some form of adventure. Over to you, Phoebes. Great. Um, so life at World Jamboree. It is an intense but rewarding experience. Like every single day is just jam-packed with new opportunities, new experiences and new people to meet. Each jamboree organises the event in their own way. However, the average looking day, you'll get up and you'll eat breakfast with your troop, then you'll most likely split up into your patrols to participate in some sort of activity, either around the site or off-site, which is also a possibility. So obviously that will depend on where you have your lunch, whether you've packed it with you or maybe just buy something at a food house. And you'll do however many activities in a day. You'll come back at the end of the day and you'll reunite with your troop for dinner. And then you've got all this free time just to roam around and spend time with your new friends that you'll inevitably make. And these friends, they're going to be from Germany. They're going to be from Canada. They can be from the suburb next to yours that you haven't even met yet. These people, they'll be from everywhere and anywhere. And you'll just, you'll enjoy it so much. And it's an experience that's indescribable unless you've been there. So it's basically just a very big giant camp with, activities and experiences that you wouldn't get at a normal scout camp. Cool. Thanks, Phoebe. And thanks, Toby, as well. Uh, so next, we're going to talk about uh, some uh, things about the Jamboree, like the units and the troop gear uh, that you will be getting. Um, so a unit uh, at a World Scout Jamboree is made up of 36 uh, young people. Uh, which is four patrols, and it also has four troop leaders or unit leaders. Um, and these will be adult scouts or rover scouts who will be coming along and being line leaders uh, for the event. Um, our unit should be representing a group of people from all over Australia. And what we're looking to do is um, create our patrols uh, based on some local areas and also then combine the patrols uh, with other people uh, from all around the country which is an amazing thing. So you'll be able to meet and create friends from all across uh, Scouts Australia. And not only that too, you'll probably be camping next to a German troop or another troop, um, which will be uh, a great experience for you to then make friends from all around the world too. When we think about troop gear for the Jamboree, uh, this is the stuff that is actually provided by the Jamboree. Uh, and each troop will be given a single person tent uh, and sleeping mat for each participant that they have in their troop. You guys will also get a dining shelter and a whole bunch of cooking equipment and the things you need to survive uh, while you're camping uh, for the amount of time we are away in South Korea at the Jamboree. Um, so this is the stuff provided by the Jamboree and we'll go on a little bit later to talk about the merchandise and the gear that will be provided by us as Scouts Australia. We will just uh, quickly show another video uh, and then we will jump back into the presentation. Uh, Phoebe, over to you. Great, thanks. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is the experience of World Jamboree. And nothing is comparable to a World Jamboree, not even the last World Jamboree. So what Toby and I experienced in America, it's going to be different to what you as youth members are going to experience in Korea. It's going to be just as amazing and incredible, but it's going to be different. Just the size and scale of this camp, it can't be fully represented in 
this presentation or even any of the many, many stories I'm sure some of you have heard. And I'm sure that you, anyone else who's been can agree with me when I say that you have to be there to understand. Like just being in such a diverse community, yet having something that unites everyone there, that unites all 50,000 people there, it's, it's indescribable. <laughs> it creates an environment that truly can only be found once every four years and bonds will be created that will last and stand the test of time. The opportunity to not only explore another country, but also get the taste of 154 other scouting nations from around the world. It's, it's just amazing. It's, a very, it's an experience that very few will ever get to have. And this trip, it will help define who you are, define, sorry, who you are, for the rest of your life and you're going to carry it for the rest of your life it's just it is truly indescribable until you're there that's how amazing and unique it is and over to toby <laughs> that'll be me yes yeah, contingent gear uh if you can see in the image just there you can see he's wearing a lovely yellow shirt here's one i prepared earlier um, no, we won't be wearing this exact shirt, but next time we will be wearing some contingent merch similar to it. Um, the idea is to show you that we're Australian and that we're united and we're the Australian Scouts. So definitely a big part of the Jamboree is being Australian. A lot of people get the opportunity to uh, meet Australians because we don't get the opportunity to just kind of pop over to Europe super easily or pop by America. We We really have to go out of our way to get somewhere. So we are very much a contingent that is known and people love to meet us. So definitely good to have merch like that. We also got a contingent of Kubra. So the classic of Kubra, we wore it all of last year. Marie, um, they were really, really great. Um, but this time we've thought that we don't want people going on activities and risking their Kubra. So we've also got a contingent hat, which I don't have with me because we didn't have that last time. Um, but this time around, we've got a contingent hat so you guys can enjoy the daylight and not have to worry about losing your very nice Akubra. Not only that, um, but we'll ha also have a contingent badge. So the badge I don't have on me at the moment, but essentially it'll be a badge that signifies the Australian contingent. And it means you'll have the opportunity to trade it. You can sew it onto different uh, parts of your camp blanket or your shirt. Um, there'll be definitely one that is sewn to your, uh, to your scouting shirt because that is part of the traveling um, experience. And then you'll also be given a travel bag and a backpack. So that'll be similar to your AJ bag, a nice big bag for you to carry all of your stuff, as well as something you can travel during the day. So a nice backpack that'll fit everything you need, including your day food, some maybe a change of clothes if you need it for whatever reason, or uh, if you're going for a day hike. So it definitely encapsulates all the stuff you need. And it's a great opportunity to kind of expand your collection of scouting merchandise. So it's always good fun to get contingent gear and um, more information will be released about that as we go on. Uh, over to Lloyd. Thanks, Toby. I'm surprised you didn't bring along the travel bag and the backpack as well from last time. It's hidden down uh, in my bag. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Uh, so as many of you may have saw tonight, um, we are also looking to run uh, two fantastic uh, post tours uh, as crafted uh, with help from our uh, international commissioner. Um, so these are to Japan and Thailand. Um, there's more information available about these post tours on our uh, website. Uh, and also on our Facebook pages. So make sure you check that out. Uh, and if you, when you apply this, uh, this Friday, uh, you'll be able to select which option of post tour uh, that you would like to participate in. And the post tours uh, will be run based on expressions of interest. So we will uh, look to run uh, them based on if we get enough people for a certain country or different type, uh, different aspects of um, the situation at this point in time. I think the next slide is for Stephen actually um, about COVID-19. Thank you very much, Lloyd. Um, just I'll just wind back a fraction before I start on COVID-19. Um, what Lloyd mentioned was fantastic regarding the tour. The one thing I do want to stress, though, on the application form on Friday, it's not a binding a choice. 
All it is is to give us, the team, enough information to work out which one or hopefully both tours that we can run. If we can run both, um, you will then have to make the choice between one of them because as much as one of my team did say that they wanted to do um, two, one behind the other, um, we can't quite do that. So one tour only, and I'm really looking to, to hope that we'll take at least 400 people on two tours. So that's my uh, my my aim, and I'd, I'd be a very happy contingent leader if we could do that. So moving on to COVID-19, I think by now we all have realised what COVID-19 can mean to us, um, being locked up and all of that, and all we're doing is looking forward to getting out of lockdowns and experiencing travel again. We have been planning this now since the very first day of COVID, which is really funny for us to build a plan, not knowing whether or not we'd even be able to go ahead, that we'd have vaccinations in place, etc. But we've been planning away. We've made, we've looked at risks. We've worked with um, Aaron Wardle, who's the International Commissioner of Australia, who's also been working with uh, DFAT, um, one of the Australian government departments about tra uh, travel. So we, we've been making certain that everything is as safe as we can make it. We are very confident that not only have we as a contingent crossed all the T's and dotted the I's, but also Korea, who is our host nation, are also putting in all the appropriate controls in place so that the event will run successfully. And if there is a minor outbreak there, it'll be contained immediately. And uh, if, and the uh, people um, quarantined as required. I know vaccinations is very high on the list of everyone at the moment. We encourage everyone to get vaccinated. And I hope that we, we will be able to go ahead because everyone will will have their vaccinations and will be right. And this means across the world. Korea needs to make certain that the people coming are all vaccinated and I, I am thoroughly supporting that. But at the moment, we don't know what the exact rules are. All we know is that we can encourage everyone to get vaccinated and to stay safe themselves and protect others. That's what the vac vaccination is all about. I would also like to take another quick break from the presentation and say, I'd like to welcome 102 people to this call. We've just broken the 100 mark. So congratulations to everyone out there. I'm really happy to see the enthusiasm for this event. I know it was a short notice, so thank you to everyone that's here. Okay, back to you, Lloyd. Thanks, Stephen. And um, for those of your friends and uh, fellow scouts who can't make tonight's call, um, we'll publish a recording of it also after. But stay tuned to the live stream, though, because uh, we have a Q&A session coming up shortly, and you'll be able to drop your questions into the comments, and we'll answer them on screen as sort of a panel type thing. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments uh, while we're talking. Um, so price and payment. So I did see a question in the comments around pricing and uh, sort of where that's at. Um, so for youth uh, members, uh, the cost, uh, so for youth line leaders and CMT, the cost is $5,800. Uh, for the international service team, it's $5,030. And if you're an IST uh, who uh, wishes to do independent travel, and this option is only available to IST, uh, the cost of the Jamboree uh, will be $2,520. Um, into these costs, we've calculated the best we can, uh, the current situation and different things that could happen and uh, many uncertainties. Um, but we're hoping for the final payment to be reduced. Um, and this will be for youth line leaders and CMT um, and and the other, uh, the international service team and also the independent travel option. Uh, and I just wanted to make sure uh, just wanted to reiterate that the uh, independent travel option is only for IST. Uh, there was also a question I saw, which actually we'll cover it right now, is the payment schedule. 
and when are the different payments due. Um, so you can see this on the screen here. I'm not going to read through it all. However, this is also available uh, on our website, um, scouts.com.au forward slash WSJ2023. Uh, so head over there and make sure you check that out. Uh, you can see the last payment is due in um, first in the on the 1st of February 2023. And as we mentioned, that payment we are hoping to reduce as well. Uh, I'd just uh, like to jump in there quickly, Lloyd. Before sure, you move um, I've just been noticing in the chat there, people are saying, what's IST? First of all, I apologise that we've been using a little bit of jargon. We've been living this for so long, it's become second nature, so I apologise for that. IST is the International Service Team, and these are leaders who, or rovers, who are not going to be looking after you as the youth members, but in as in a uh, troop leader or a unit leader, but they're going to be there providing activities and all the other bits and pieces that have to happen so you as a scout or venturer can have the time of your life at the Jamboree. They're a very, very important part of the Jamboree, and it may sound boring when you hear it like that, but the IST have a ball because after uh, 5 o'clock, when you guys start doing all their night activities, they have their own night activities. And having seen some of them at the uh, World Scout Jamboree last time, they were really enjoying themselves. So I would also encourage anyone who knows rovers and leaders that they, they can apply as IST as well, or as I said originally, the International Service Team. Sorry about that brief interlude, Lloyd. All yours. No, all good. Thanks, Stephen. And I also saw a question from Nicholas as well. Uh, what are the roles of rovers and leaders during the event? Um, so rovers are able to apply for IST uh, uh, or as a um, or as a line leader, Stephen. I think that's correct if they uh, wish to. Uh, if a rover is a fully a, trained a leader as well in their, in yes. their own right. Um, rovers are more than welcome to apply as a line leader. Cool. Thank you. Um, all right. So question also there was on insurance. Um, so just to call out, we've got you covered from the time we leave Australia to the time we get back home. Um, the insurance we have includes all the activities that we'll be doing at the World Scout Jamboree. Um, so, yes, we do have travel insurance for this event uh, and there will be insurance provided uh, as part of your contingent fee. Toby and Phoebe, I think it's back over to you both. Thanks, Lloyd. Um, World Jamboree sounds like a lot of money. And it kind of is, especially for teenagers. But it's totally worth it. So start fundraising early. Yeah, Just definitely. do whatever um, you can. <laughs> if you can, take advantage of any opportunity you get to fundraise. So... If you've got um, any annual fundraisers that you do with your unit or crew or uh, troop or anything, just, you know, make sure to take advantage of it for yourself and definitely try and get as many people as you can involved in coming to the World Jamboree and fundraising with you. So things like movie nights, raffles, odd jobs for family and friends, sausage sizzle, there's only just, this is a start of a list. You know, this list can go on forever. You've got the opportunity to really take some initiative and, um, raise money to come to such a phenomenal amazing event it's it's one of those things that are definitely worth it and um definitely worth putting in the effort for yeah and you can get really creative with your fundraising as well um if there's something that interests you if you've ever wanted to run a trivia night you could do that if you're part of some other community group you can incorporate those skills into it possibly you can get really creative with it and have a really good time. So start fundraising early, and but get around it because it's it's worth it. Definitely. So Phoebe, have you any ideas of what you did to raise money to get to the World Scout Jamboree last time that you might be able to give people ideas on? Um, chocolate boxes. People love chocolate boxes and that's kind of the first thing that comes to mind and I know that we did quite a bit of that so Cadbury chocolate boxes guys don't sleep on them 
People love them. <laughs> I see there are. I see there's also a few comments on different fundraising ideas uh, in the stream and uh, someone suggesting fruit picking as well, uh, which is, sounds like a cool idea. Um, yeah, it definitely helps out your local farmers a lot, you know, and it's a great I, way I to get active definitely need throughout it at your the school moment. holidays. Sounds like it for sure. So what uh, exciting news do you guys have to share, Phoebe and Toby? Registrations open on October 1st. You better be on that list. <laughs> Two days away. Two days away. Oh, yeah. Two this days Friday. away. This yep. Friday. It's very exciting. It'll be the uh, opportunity to get your name on that list. So definitely don't miss out on the opportunity to be within, you know, the first 100 people to be there because, honestly, it's opportunity of a lifetime. Uh, definitely worth putting your name down and getting involved with it. Yeah. We want to move on to your application. Oh, sorry, you go. I was just going to say, your application is the very first step of this amazing adventure. So don't forget about it. I agree. It's like the key, uh, the key step. Uh, so we're going to move on to some live Q and A. Uh, we already have quite a few comments uh, on our stream uh, that will run through some of the questions. Um, so there was a question on how much will the extra tours cost, Stephen, from Felicity. Uh, thank you, Felicity. Um, we haven't costed them yet, but our rough costs are around about the $2,400 mark. Now, putting that in context, the post-tour post for the last World Jamboree was $2,400. So that's good news that we haven't put it up but also this tour is at least one day longer than their tour. So I think that it's very good value for, for the money of $2,400. Lloyd? Thanks, Stephen. Sorry, do, do, doing two things at once, trying to read some which comments uh, need to come up on screen. Uh, and I was also on mute. Uh, there was a question on uh, what is the age eligibility from Okay, um, I'll add to that one. Yes. So age eligibility, we've put it on our website. Um, you've got to be 14 on the 1st of August 2023 and less than 18 on the last day of the Jamboree. Now, there may be a little bit of confusion about that, um, in that I have heard tonight that some of our postcards may have got to um, some ineligible people, and I really apologise for that. It seems that some human error has crept in, but the dates that are on our website are the actual dates. And so from memory, it's the 1st of August 2009 down to the 13th of August 2005. Now, if you're outside of that range, if you're over the age group, so you're born before the 13th or before the 13th of August 2005, more than welcome to come as um, international service team. Uh, if you're born after the uh, 1st of August 2009, you've got an exciting time coming up because Poland in the last month has just won the rights to host the World Jamboree after Korea. So you may not make it to this one, but you can still make it to the next one in um, 2027. Thank you, Lloyd. Thanks, St Thanks Stephen. Uh, Toby and Phoebe, there's a question uh, from Jane around, is it sort of like an Australian Jamboree, but on a massive scale? I think you two may be both best to answer that question. <laughs> I think it's much more than that, but yes, it is on a massive scale, but I'd love to hear your opinions. Yeah. Yes and no. Like, my AJ was so long ago. Um, so I can't really remember it. Fair enough. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, it is, but it isn't. It's... <laughs> You it's, can't explain it's it. It's indescribable. 
It is. Um, you know, the the Australian jamboree is very Australian. It's very Australian camping. It's very it's very much um, Australian. Uh, the World Jamboree is an opportunity that's similar to it. It is a very much blown up scale of the Australian Jamboree, but it's also giving you the opportunity to go out and meet people from different cultures, make friends internationally, trade badges with people you never thought you would, um, you know, and not only that, but there's also a unique opportunity to explore a different country. So obviously we get to explore Seoul. We get a, if you do the post tour, you get to go to Japan or potentially Thailand, um, you know, and there's these amazing opportunities to really not only travel, but enjoy the world for the beautiful culture that it can be. So it's yes, an Australian jamboree, but it's also culturally culturally different, different activities, different opportunity, and a different experience overall. So it's definitely definitely something worth uh, taking the time to go to. And I think yeah, I think um, my take on that is that. Sorry, Phoebe, you go. Okay, um, it's also okay. So Australian jamboree is just. It's purely scout age, whereas a world jamboree, it does go a bit older, you know, into adventurers and the adventurer section. And I think that does, you know, it's not, it's not like a big gap, but it just does create that little bit more of independence when you're choosing what activities to do. And I think that actually makes a really big difference. Yeah. Yeah, and I think my take on that is like it, it's an Australian jamboree is very much uh, much more activity based, um, but a World Scout jamboree is much more culturally based, and you mix with all different cultures uh, from across the world, uh, which is an amazing experience, and you create friends for life from across the world. I know I still have friends from the last World Scout jamboree in 2019, and other events I've been to at like Kiss in 2016, uh, where I still talk to uh, on a monthly basis or weekly basis and keep in touch with them. So. You definitely create friends for life. Um, there was uh, some more questions. Uh, what time do applications open? Uh, applications open on the 1st of October at... Uh, midnight. 12 at midnight. So 12.01, uh, if you want to stay up and apply. It is school holidays at the moment, I think, on some of the East Coast. Uh, so feel free to stay up and make sure you get your application in. If you want to be the first one in, feel free to register for a profile if you don't have one already uh, and then uh, get ready to go in and register for that event uh, just after midnight. I'll be counting down my uh, um, registration day minutes. So yeah. I'll see you there. Now, that actually brings up an interesting question which I haven't uh, seen asked tonight, but I was asked today, and that is, is there a limit on the number of people who can go to the World Jamboree? That is a question I was just about to pull up, Stephen. Oh, right. Thank you. Well, um, yes and no. Yes, there is a limit. It is 10% of the total number of people that they're planning to have. And that's 5,000 is 10%. I would love, absolutely love to take 5,000 people from Australia to the Jamboree. But I know that that's not going to happen. So, no, we don't have a limit. I would love, though, if we could have um, the at least 800 people from Australia. That will make it the biggest jamboree contingent that we have ever taken. If we can get over a thousand people, that means it'll be the biggest biggest contingent that scouting has ever sent overseas in Australia. So there's two challenges, and please go and tell all your friends that um, the uh, challenge is there to get at least 800 people going overseas. Um, yeah. Also, and I think I was just going to say that um, there is a quota on leaders. Now, that quota is that it must be fifth, maximum is 50% of the um, youth members. So if you are an adult wanting to go, bring along more and more youth members so we can make certain that there's no problem for you coming along as well. So it's an incentive for all the adults to go and make certain that all their troop, sorry, units come along to the event. Um, but, yeah, so our real total is unlimited for Australian con uh, conditions. 
the only limit is on adults, which is 50% of the youth figure. Or another way of looking at one third, one -third of the contingent. Um, Stephen, I'm going to leave you on the question and answer duty. Uh, there is Thank another you. question around, uh, is there a payment needed with the registration from Billy? Um, yes, actually, this is, might be a good time, Lloyd. Can you bring up our website and share our website? For sure. Just give me one I'm moment. I'm putting Lloyd on the spot will... here, everyone. We'll see how good he is with technology. Uh, I just brought up the Scouts New Zealand website. We don't need that one. No. <laughs> That's the wrong one. Uh, one second. Do you want the homepage? Yes, please. So this is our, our page. No, I don't want their Sorry, home, I want yeah, our homepage, Sorry. please. Thank you. There you so go. this is our page, and at the end of the presentation, we will be releasing it. We'll show you our link and all, and we will re, we'll re, re encourage you to come back to it. But once you're on this page, if you click on your adventure, this brings up on all, all sorts of interesting things. So the first one I'll look at is eligibility. And I saw there was a question yes. about publishing the age ranges, actually. So there's, there is our age ranges. And I did get them slightly wrong. I mixed them up, so I apologise for that. But um, they are the dates that you have to be born between. Um, and so it gives you all, all of our eligibility to attend um, for youth, youth participants, adult line leaders, and a line leader is someone who will be in charge of working with our youth members uh, and its ratio of one adult to nine youth members in the units. You scroll a bit further, Lloyd, and then the eligibility for our international service team. Thank you. So now if you can just go back to our menu, drop down on your adventure and price and payment. So scroll through that, please. There's the prices, what to include, and this is why we we're going to go here was the payment schedule. So on application, there is a $500 deposit. Um, and then what we've done is based on um, our expenses that we can delay as much as possible, we've put some payments, uh, our payment structure together uh, with the heavier payments coming towards the end, which gives you more time to save up rather than hitting you up front and you want wondering where you're getting the money from. As Lloyd did, sorry, I think I may have dropped out there. We'd love you. We'd love to be able to reduce the last payment, and that is our aim at the moment. Um, and now I'll just expand the question slightly and talk about our withdrawal policy. Sorry, Stephen. I think um, we might so be if you losing... withdraw before the twenty, the first of yeah, internet connection you here and the sticks are terrible. Um, so you... as I was saying, that if you get if you withdraw before the thirty first of January two thousand and twenty two, you get a full refund. And then, as it says, it's slow a slow increase of the uh, refund amount that it'll cost you and these are our expenses that uh, we've already outlaid and then if we move the last bit is cancellation policy and this is if we have i'm sorry about that uh, i think i'm back again um, if we have to cancel the event, so if Scouts Australia is told that they have to cancel the event either by the Korean Association, by our government, etc., we will tr we will try and give a full refund. It's and what the refund will consist of is all the funds that we can recover via via any various means possible, so insurance policies, uh, 
getting our getting my funds back where from where we've spent them etc cetera, etc cetera. so we will do our best to get every cent back from so that we can give back to you guys as much possible as much of the funds as possible i cannot say unfortunately that we can give you a full refund yet because it'll all depend on our suppliers thank you lloyd Thank you, Stephen. And just while we're on the website, I uh, quickly wanted to show the resources page. Uh, someone asked if this presentation will be available after. Uh, yes, it definitely will be. We'll download it from this system. Uh, it'll be on YouTube and our Facebook page, uh, and we'll also publish it on our resources. Uh, also with the presentation deck, as I know some of you would like to use that uh, for your own groups uh, to talk about the Jamboree. Uh, all right, I would just change back to a different view. And um, we will keep going with the questions, if that's all right. Um, Stephen, are you still with yep. us? I'm still with you. Yep. Okay. Uh, there is a question from Daniel. Uh, I'm looking as going as a line leader. I'm a current scout leader. Will my son, who is a scout, uh, who is about to move up to scout, to be able to be placed in the same troop as me? Okay. Um Actually, a very good question from a slightly different point of view, Daniel, in that for the first time, we're actually looking at running geographic geographic patrols, i.e. local patrols. You Historically, we've always had a patrol that's been mixed up. Um, you might have one, one person from country uh, New South Wales, someone from country uh, WA, and they've all been mixed up in the patrol. What we're just doing this time is grouping our patrols in a local area so that you get a chance to know people before you um, get, get into a career. And that, I think, is going to be the strongest thing to build up our teams before you actually leave Australia. Um, so... Yes, as a scout leader, um, you're certainly welcome as a line leader, and I hope that you'll apply as a line leader, Daniel. Will your son be able to be in the same troop as you? Well, to be quite honest, Daniel, that depends on your son. If he wants to be there, uh, great, but we, we're going to give all of our youth members the choice of whether or not they really want to be with that local troop or whether they want to just cross a border or something. Thanks, Stephen. Um, there was another question from YouTube from Tim Yu around the age ranges. Uh, we just went through that. Uh, so that's about one. I would website. assume the answer would be yes. So, Sorry, Stephen. You're back. That's all right. We'll keep going. Sorry. Uh, so, yeah, there was a question from Tim around age ranges that's published on our website. Um, so it simplifies the checks for you. Uh, we have another question, uh, Stephen, probably aimed for you. Uh, I will be 18 during the Jamboree. Can I still register? You can certainly register. Um, but if you're 18 during the Jamboree, you actually don't meet the requirements. So, which is to be uh, under 18 as at the last day of the Jamboree. Um, so, but you can still register and would love you to have, have you along attending as a rover um, and being part of the IST, which is exactly what Toby and Phoebe would be if they hadn't drawn the short straw to be part of the uh, uh, contingent management team and make certain that everyone else is having a great fun time. So please apply, <clears throat> talk to some of the other um, rovers in your area and they'll tell you what an absolute blast a World Jamboree can be. Thank you, Lord. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, there is another question. Oh, it's more of a comment, but I think it's worth sharing uh, from Michelle around... Uh, Uh, there's a comment, actually, which I think is worth sharing from Michelle uh, talking about her daughter raised more than half her funds from recycling bottles and cans for the last World Scout Jamboree, and hopefully uh, her son can do the same this time. So I think that's a great fundraising idea as yeah. well for people yeah. who are looking for fundraising ideas. 
There's another question from Sue. I will take this one uh, on YouTube. Do leaders apply on the same day and website? Yes, absolutely. Everyone needs to apply through the uh, same registration and uh, application system uh, on Friday. So yes, absolutely. There was a question from Karen around what age is the cutoff for venturers? Um, so as we went through earlier, the cutoff for venturers is at 18 as they have to be uh, 18 before the last day of, they cannot be 18 before the last day of the World Scout Jamboree. Um, oh, sorry, I just lost where I was. Hold up. Um, Nick J. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm just trying to find that, that one. Nick G. Hang on. I, I don't know where it is. Don't worry. Um, Suzanne, yes, we are definitely anticipating needing uh, line leaders and troop leaders. Uh, we believe that we wanted to give the best experience to our youth members. We need our best line leaders out there. And these are leaders who understand the stresses that youth are going to go through at a jamboree. Um, a jamboree, as I think most leaders on this call would have heard this before, is not a holiday. A jamboree is a time that we go to work and we go to make certain that our youth members have an absolute ball and that they have the holiday of their lifetime. But, yes, we strongly think that we'll be uh, and anticipating the need for lots of lot good quality line leaders and troop leaders out there. I hope that answers your question, Suzanne. Um, there is another question uh, from YouTube from Anthony. If you're not invested in ventures, but you're an invested scout prior to the camp, can you still come? If yes, which uniform do you bring? Uh, I'll give that one a go. Um, yes, you can, because the age group for um, the... World Scout Jamboree is not limited to venturers. It's actually scouts and venturers. So there'll be many scout uniforms there and there will be many venturer uniforms there. So it's whichever one you would like to wear, um, whether or not you wish to show off all your badges from scouts and wear your scout uniform or whether you want to show that, yes, you're a very junior venturer there and be very proud of your new maroon uh, shoulder stri stripe totally up to you uh but yes you can come because you're an invested scout as long as you meet the age group that's the only uh, caveat on that one cool thank you stephen uh there's another question for you uh are parent helpers allowed to come with the scouts um okay a parent helper as long as they are a registered member of Scouts Australia. We'll just that uh, means that you we'll have done. Come back. Sorry. So that's all right. You're a member of your if you branch. Were... You're um, done. Done your um, mandatory training. You have a working with children's check or equivalent. Um, and you're recommended by your branch commissioner. So they're the um, requirements, but otherwise you'd be treated as any other um, international service team. You would not be put into a line leader's role. Now, I did notice, and I'll pick up on this question too, where does a carer fit? A carer is outside of what we would say the normal four leaders uh, 36 youth. A carer looking after a youth member is classed as an additional leader in the troop because they are there to make certain that that youth member can have an experience the same as the rest of the um, the rest of the unit. So you're outside of the area of the standard thing, but you are still most eligible to attend. Uh, the only thing that we do ask is that you uh, do your mandatory training, you've got to work in the children's check, and you're a member of the branch, which are all very simple things. Your mandatory training is only two, two training courses, which are all both online. So very easy to, to do. 
hope Paul. that answers that question. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, we are almost running out of time. Uh, I didn't think we would get so many questions, so this is great. And um, we will probably look to be running an, another session uh, as well uh, once applications open to answer more questions. So I, I know that's something we've talked about. Um, and sorry, Stephen, Lord, there is a... I'm, ha I'm happy to keep going until we've got all the questions answered. So For sure. Okay, I'm happy to keep going too. Um, there is another question actually, which we discussed today over the phone. Uh, it's a good question. I'm going to bring it up on screen for you. Okay. Uh, thanks, Nadine. Um, again, it will all depend on what we can get back from our um, suppliers at that stage. We will be doing everything possible to get a re full refund from all of our suppliers. Obviously, we'll have already paid out a lot of the money, such as airfares, etc. cetera. Um, Korea has also said that they will be doing the same thing from their side. So we will hopefully get as much of the um, Jamboree fee that we pay to Korea back as well. So we will do everything possible. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a crystal ball at the moment, as much as I'd love to. And right. I can't guarantee how much. You... Sorry about that. I'm in the sticks. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, maybe if you want to turn off your video for the next one, it might be uh, easier. That I think we can deal with the audio if we need to. Um, Okay, I'm going to take the next question. Uh, there is a question from Daniel Lai about how do we get jobs allocated for IST. Uh, so when you apply in our Australian application system, there is a preference for jobs. Uh, this is where you fill out your first round of preferences. And what we'll do is we'll take those preferences and when Korea open their application system, we'll enter these into the Korean application system. And at that point, that's where uh, they will know what jobs you're interested in and then uh, potentially they will contact you. We don't know the full process just yet, um, but that's sort of a similar process as to what happened last time. Um, so that's sort of how you get allocated uh, for jobs. There was another question for, uh, about minimum badge requirements to attend. Um, so for youth participants, you need to be an invested scout or venturer and have completed the Outdoor Adventure Skills Camping Stage 4 prior to attending the World Scout Jamboree. So that is the requirement for youth members to attend uh, the event. Um, Lori, um, I'm just going to yes, jump in Stephen. here. There's a question yes, there sure. from Carla, Carla Quintana. Um, Carla, can I ask that you email that question to um, hello at uh, WSJ2023? Dot scouts .com .au, and I'll respond to that one. It's a little bit of a tricky answer, which I'd prefer to uh, dig a bit deeper before we give that answer to you. Thank you, Lloyd. Thanks, Stephen. Um, there was another question around my son is currently 16 and he'll be 18 and a half uh, years old at the time, can he go? Uh, yes, absolutely, but he would uh, be going as an IST member if he was still a Rover Scout. Uh, he wouldn't be able to attend as a youth member, unfortunately. Um, can parents be on IST was another question. Yes, this is a similar answer to the previous question around can um, parent helpers go? Uh, so if parents are registered uh, members of Scouts Australia, they are able to attend um, in an IST capacity. Um, there's another, there's a question, but I'm not sure. Maybe we can try and decipher it together, team, if that's all right, um, since we want to try and answer all of these. So you have to be 17 until the end of the World Jam uh, to go as a youth member, but you can probably go as a line leader if yes. he's qualified then. I'm not sure if this was a comment in relation mm -hmm. to our question yeah. answer. I think that's just a comment. Um, yep. And yet, if you're over 18 at the end of the jam, but before the end of the jamboree, you're more than welcome to attend as international service team. Cool. 
Um, Poppy asked a question. Uh, I'm not going to bring it up on screen, but what badge do you need to go? Um, so we just answered that one as well. So feel free to head over to our website, Poppy, as well, uh, if you want to learn more about that. Um, there's another question from Anthony. Uh, if you're a scout or venturer uh, and it is linking to ventures right now, and I'm unsure if you'll be invested before the flight or camp, do I count as a scout or venturer in the application system? That's a really good question, Stephen. Uh, and it's something that I think we struggled with a bit last time. Um, should they register in the application system as what they are today or what they will be at the uh, time of the event? Okay. To be quite honest, we don't really care. Um, that is um, not, <clears throat> it isn't going to change anything that's in the system. But I would suggest that you register as you would be in 2023. But we'll be going off dates of birth anyway, rather than uh, that. Where it does come into effect, if you are a venturer now and you are going to be a rover when you attend the event, that is when you need to select rover, not venturer. Cool. Thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, Robert Zamora asked a good question. When do applications close? Applications will be closing on the 31st of January 2022. So end of January, just as school goes back next year. Um, okay. Um, there was also some other questions around cutoff dates for registrations, etc. cetera. Uh, Nadine, I see you've got a question as well about coming as a venture leader. Um, probably email that one to us as it's probably more specific and requires a sort of one-on-one uh, -on -one conversation. Um, how big of a contingent will be going? Alex asked. Uh, we sort of talked about that a bit earlier. We're hoping to take over 600 people uh, to this. Come on, uh, 800, Lloyd, 800. Eight 800 and we will be the biggest contingent ever uh to a world scout jamboree that's ever left australia which will be exciting we were the biggest contingent last time to america uh we hope to be even bigger this time um there's a good question stephen from james um about will there be electricity available for charging batteries and other devices on site um maybe toby and phoebe do you want to take a stab at this question from your experience in 2019? We can't comment. It'll be exactly the same. But do you want to explain what happened in 2019? Um, gladly. So last time in 2019, there were charging stations that were placed around. They weren't necessarily at each of our campsites, but just in general places. Sometimes there'd be a group of them. And you could just go plug in your phone and charge it up. So that's the experience that we had as youth. And you kind of either had to guard it or keep an eye on it because unfortunately. But anyways, um, yeah, so there is cords and electricity available to charge phones and those kinds of appliances. On a more leader side of things, obviously I'm not sure because I've only been as a youth, but there's definitely availability there. Um, I definitely highly, highly recommend buying one of uh, quite a few portable chargers or just one really, really big one um, that's legally allowed on a flight. Don't go too big, otherwise they won't let you take it on the flight. Um, but yeah, portable chargers is a great way to kind of get through the jamboree if you, for instance, don't want to just leave it somewhere or you don't want to wait around with it. So what I did is I bought a nice big one. I put it into my um, into my big bag so then it would go under the plane and it was fine. And then I got there and I pretty much just used that the whole time and it got me through the, pretty much the entire jamboree. So, yes, take advantage of uh, portable chargers. And just on that one as well, as part of our optional merchandise that we'll be uh, selling towards um, in uh, late 2022 will be battery packs. Um, they will be the biggest battery pack that you can actually take on an aircraft. Uh, so that and they'll be branded with our logo etc so i strongly suggest that you purchase them because we'll be buying in bulk we'll try and get the best possible price for you i'm still using the two that i bought at the last australian so um strongly suggest doing that 
Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Phoebe and Toby, uh, for your experience. Uh, there is a question uh, which is about when do we get to see our troop for the first time or patrol for the first time? Um, so as we sort of talked about, we're looking to do geographic patrols uh, based on our local areas. So we will try and organize pre-camps um, for you guys to meet up uh, before the Jamboree in your patrol. But the first time you may meet your patrol will be, likely be in country, uh, sorry, your troop will likely be in country uh, when we get to South Korea. And we'll have a, uh, you'll break out there into your troops. So just a little bit more on that is what are what are we're looking at is making certain that you as a patrol have camped with you, with your nine plus your local leader, and that's going to be your patrol unit. So you may hopefully have done two or three pre jamboree camps, so to speak, and maybe with some of the local uh, patrols that are around. But as Lloyd mentioned. Trolls we will get from different states. So I don't know how much you got of that, Lloyd. Um, yeah, I got a bit of that um, around moving the patrols uh, yeah. from different states. Yeah, so a patrol will be, uh, sorry, a troop will be made up of four different states, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, which will be amazing. And also if we have some patrols that are on border regions as well, they might be uh, some makeup of patrol in that space too. Um, so I think that's all the questions we have uh, for now. Um, so if you don't have any more questions, uh, we'll just leave you guys with a video uh, to finish off this presentation. Uh, we really thank you for your time tonight and thank you for coming to join us. We hope to see you applying for the uh, World Scout Jamboree on Friday, uh, which will be an amazing experience. Uh, and we can't wait to uh, get to South Korea in 2023 with you. Uh, so Phoebe, Toby, Stephen, anything else you'd like to say? Phoebe, if you want to go first. I was just going to say thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, yeah. We're always here to answer questions as well. So shoot them yep. over. Um, also, yep. if you haven't already, please go like our Facebook and Instagram. Um, we answer questions there if you want to shoot us messages through our socials. Um, and also, it's a great way to get information that we're disseminating out through to you guys, uh, not only there, but also definitely just kind of keeping your eye out through that. And also make sure to check out our website because our website is where our main pieces of information will come from. And we also have a great that. TikTok account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Phoebe's our I main person on it. Um, I just make like sure to you say, check out our TikTok. Yeah, thank you very much to Lloyd, Phoebe and Toby for running tonight's session. I would love to see every single one on every single one of you on this call uh, apply on Friday, but please, it is not a race to apply on midnight. If you want to wait, uh, sleep in and apply a little bit later, that's fine. As I said, there is no limit. You can even apply all the way through until January. But please get in there. Give us the numbers that are coming so that we can get excited ourselves. Uh, we're really looking forward to seeing lots and lots of applications as soon as possible. So thank you all, and we will see you all in Korea in 2023. Good night, all. And uh, we'll just leave you with a short video. Thank you. So hi, Javo. I'm from Kenya. I'm from Bolivia. So we just met and we became friends. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm very humble. It's Korea traditional cross. Korea! Korea. Korea. and typical things that we have in Bolivia. This is Cha Cha. It's a musical instrument for our country. It's made by class of an animal and we make music.
Hi, we are from Chile, and right now cooking the humita. Hi, we are from Switzerland, and we are cooking potosnite. Hi, guys, we are from Portugal, and we are offering sweet rice. Welcome to Saudi Arabia. This is Arabic coffee. We are from Nepal and we are going to perform a cultural dance. This is the fashion you put in. Welcome to Tunisia! Hey, this is Sergi and this is Karina. It's a spicy so. We are from Paraguay and this is a typical trip. We are from Manchester, UK. <laughs> Welcome to Brazil! Welcome to Taiwan! Welcome to Canada and come play some hockey. Welcome to South Africa. Welcome to Europe. Welcome to Ukraine. I'm from Bangladesh. I wear shari. And I'm wearing silver. Welcome to Spain. Welcome to Sri Lanka. Hi, boys. A scout in a neckerchief can change the world. Hey!